Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the Dieter Melhorn Fishing Podcast. I hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to the show or watching the show on YouTube. There is a video version of the podcast that you can check out. Dieter Melhorn Fishing, same name on YouTube as it is on the podcast. And uh, all you regular listeners and viewers, I appreciate you coming back and tuning in. And to anybody new who happens to be stumbling by and finding this, thanks for checking it out. Consider subscribing, and uh, we enjoy having you. If you want to give me some feedback... The easiest thing to do, especially if you're listening to a podcast platform, is to go to my website, DieterMelhornFishing.com. There's a contact section on there. You can send me a text. You can shoot me an email. It's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Comments, questions, ideas, suggestions, or if you want to book a guide trip. I'm also a licensed uh, Coast Guard captain here in the Carolinas, do charter trips, and uh, yeah, there's information on the guide trips there. Links to all the gear we use, links to the YouTube channel, everything. That's the hub, DieterMelhornFishing.com. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about iCast, and iCast is a fishing show uh, you may or may not heard of. It uh, is the world's largest sport fishing show. It takes place in Orlando, Florida, or it has recently. I think it was in Vegas at one time, uh, but it's in Orlando. And uh, it uh, spans about three days, but it's not open to the public. It is uh, not like the Catfish Conference or some of the other major fishing shows where you and I would go there and buy stuff to fish with it's really a trade show it's where uh, people in the sport fishing industry uh, exhibit their wares things they sell uh, rods reels fishing line boat parts fishing clothing pretty much anything tied to the fishing industry is there and the bigger the name the bigger the space they take up there uh, some of them sell stuff there are buyers that are there people from walmart and academy sports and uh you know all the major players out there bass pro shop they're there to look at stuff see what's new sometimes they work out deals and make major purchases from the for the year sometimes you know they buy a little bit of stuff but it's a lot of people meeting a lot of people, getting to know a lot of people in the industry. And uh, I was able to go this year, was able to get credentialed for it. I've always wanted to go. Uh, I, I, it's, it's a, I, I thought it would be a good insight into the bigger part of the industry, the bigger picture part of the industry. And, um, you know, I'm in a little bitty small part of it. I'm in kind of here in the freshwater catfish world. When you go to ICAST, you'll see very quickly that it's a lot of saltwater fishing. It's a lot of bass fishing. Uh, a lot of guys running around in jerseys. A few of them I knew. Kevin Van Dam was there. Uh, you know, Mike Iaconelli was there. Uh, some of the bigger faces. And there was a whole lot of guys I have no clue who they are. Uh, I don't know if they're big time, little time, uh, or what time they are. But uh, there was a lot of guys running around in the fishing jerseys. And... You know, the it, it everything is there. I mean, it, it it's hard to really describe, but pen, gamagatsu hooks, uh, Shakespeare. You know, there's a whole section of ugly stick fishing rods, and uh, you know, like I said, it's not what was cool about it was, and it kind of gave you an idea it's just how big a footprint some of these brands have. It's not like you go into Bass Pro Shop and you go over there where the ugly sticks are, and there's you know, 20 rods of the same, you know, ugly stick catfish rod or ugly stick striper rod. They basically had a sample of every rod that they make. And in the ugly stick section alone, I don't know how many rods were there. They had an ugly stick for everything out there. Different lengths, different sizes, different weights. There were some offshore, I've got an offshore roller rod that I use fishing that's made by ugly stick there are two or three versions of that and I sell this to say it's 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 a good exposure to just how much stuff is out there a lot of stuff uh that we never see uh, that you don't see readily anyway you know we get uh stuff that's kind of delivered to us sold to us and we don't see everything that some of these brands even make so it's kind of crazy as to what's out there and 
it was it was awe inspiring is the best way to put it. We're talking tens of thousands of people here. It takes over an entire convention center in Orlando, and it is a massive show. Now, I was looking to see what kind of stuff there was for the world that I'm in, the world that you know, the stuff I talk about, the stuff you hear on the podcast and see on the YouTube channel. As I told a lot of the vendors there. Uh, I am a freshwater fisherman, uh, and I'm not a bass fisherman. So it's uh, a lot of, you know, southeastern fish, catfish, crappie, uh, stripers, you know, uh, bluegill, panfish world. Uh, but it's not, you know, bass fishing. So I let them know right up front that was not my world. And, um, you know, there's a lot of it there. It, it really, there, there's a lot of it. The thing that you didn't see a lot of was the... Stuff that is in this world that I'm in, the catfish world, uh, the crappie world, the striper fishing world. There is not a lot of it there. Um, I did some looking, and I apologize if I missed any vendors, but uh, I know for a fact my rod sponsor, uh, Catch the Fever, was not there. They did not have a booth set up there this year. Um, the um, uh, one I saw was uh, Catfish Pro. Catfish Pro had a booth set up. Uh, they have their, if you haven't seen Catfish Pro stuff, I've done some videos with their gear a while back. Uh, kind of their area of expertise is, whereas like the Hellcat rods that Catch the Fever makes is geared more toward a higher end uh, consumer in the catfish world. Uh, Catch the Fever or uh, Catfish Pro is designed more as something that is available in Walmart, and those are the kind of stores, department stores, they try to target with something that are rod and reel combos. You're getting, you know, they, they have a bait casting reel, and they have a catfish rod at an affordable price. A little bit more than you're going to get from Ugly Stick, but, uh, you know, it's still something that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to buy. This year, the thing they had new, and I don't have one to show you, is a spinning reel. And uh, it's got a bait feeder on it. So uh, hopefully I'll be doing some stuff with that to show you that reel down the road. Because I know a lot of you folks are interested in spinning reels. Uh, the bait casting thing is not for a lot of people. And uh, they showed me that spinning reel. And I told them it's going to be a home run. Because a lot of people are interested in spinning tackle. And for ease of operation. But Catfish Pro has it. And uh, it should be out this year. And uh, it will be available in a rod and reel combo. Catfish Pro also sells... Catfish bait, package, you know, catfish bait, little chunks of stuff, cheese baits and that kind of stuff. So they had their own booth. They were one of the vendors that were there. So, uh, you know, I was like, cool. Who else is here? And uh, I had to do some looking. Uh, halfway close to them, though, was a brand called Dragon Master. And went over, checked them out. They had some innovative products. And let me say this about the catfish world. Uh, and, and a lot of freshwater fishing. There's a lot of stuff that you can come up with an idea, drifting weights being an example, okay? Uh, it's hard to come up with something that somebody can't make themselves at home. Most of the stuff in our world is uh, either A, it, it's just something that is pulled from another part of the fishing world and utilized like hooks, sinkers, swivels, that kind of thing. Or is something that can be duplicated, replicated at home, do it yourself, DIY. Drifting sinkers are a good example for you guys that drift for catfish, the flexible drift weights. Pretty easy to do at home, uh, a little bit of effort you can do it. So it's hard to get a mass appeal of these kind of things. But Dragon Master came up with something that is, I think, kind of unique. It's a, uh, uh, and, and I'm going to give them best of show in the catfish category uh, at the show because, well, sadly, there was between Catfish Pro and them, and Catfish Pro just had a reel out this year. Catfish Pro wins for the best catfish reel uh, at the show. So, uh, again, there wasn't a lot of competition for it. But uh, Dragon Master came out with stuff that's kind of different. And uh, one of these things is one of these dragon weights here. And I'm going to describe it to you. If you're watching the podcast on YouTube, you can see it. You'll actually get to see it. If you're listening, we have to use the, the art of the word, spoken word, to describe this. As this thing unfurls, it's basically a solid black rubber encased piece of metal. I would assume it's some type of cable on the inside. It's weighted. It has weight to it. 
It's about two ounces, and it's got two swivels on both ends. And the way this thing works is, this is what actually drags at the bottom. This thing is probably 24 inches long, I would say. Comes in two colors. They make a black one and a red one. And the way this is designed is that one end is you tie your main line to. The other end you tie your leader to. And this is in the middle. So uh, a little different way of doing things here with a dragging weight. And they, like I said, make them in several different weights. I know two, three, they may be four ounces. And a little different ball game there. Another thing they raised the bar on, or at least shifted the bar, is the actual float. We all put some type of float, a demon dragon, a styrofoam float, something onto our leader line. They came up with this, and it is an EVA foam elongated float. Uh, I got a very small hole in the middle of it that your leader line goes through. And the premise behind this design is any of you guys that have dragged uh, using Santee rigs, eventually your float's going to get hit. Generally, it hinders the hookup. Uh, it will mess up a hookup. The, the, the fish will either spit the bait immediately or it hinders it from having a circle hook slide into the corner of his mouth. The idea with this is, is that because it's thin, fish can bite down onto it and it will slide and pull that hook into the corner of the mouth better than having a peg float or a demon dragon or a large cork on that line. So a little innovative stuff right there that I think is pretty cool. And another one that they got, I'm going to save the best one for last because the last one, I'm not going to call it a game changer, but it's pretty interesting. It was interesting to watch. The next to last one is this. It's a weedless circle hook. I've never seen one of these until I got to the show. And coincidentally or ironically, whichever way you want to look at it, I didn't see the Dragon Master uh, weedless circle hook first. It was the Gamagatsu has one this year. And it's actually branded as a catfish hook. So uh, it's got the little weedless, you know, wire on it just like uh, a lot of the bass hooks do any of you guys have done any bass fishing you've seen the weedless hooks but it's a circle hook and they have theirs designed to where it looks like you can still snail this with the uh, lining the wrap that is on the shank of the hook it looks very snellable but yeah it's got the little barb or the little wire cover on it just like a worm hook does a weedless worm hook but it's a circle hook so Interesting, maybe something. I got some from them, and I'm going to be doing some videos with them, and you're going to get to see these rigs in use and see how they work, see how they perform, and see if it's something you're interested in. But here's the here's the coolest thing. And again, this is something that is uh, it's hard to visualize without seeing it. I've got a video clip of it that I will put into a, another video at some point to show you. But it's this little thing. And for you guys that are listening, it basically looks like a hairbrush, bristles on a stiff hairbrush that are spiraling or sticking straight out from a round center. What happens with this little thing? And I know it's hard to see, uh, even for the people who are watching it, you can kind of see it there uh, against my hand. It is black. These little, this thing threads onto your line in front of your sinker. It would be in front of, if you were using one of their sinkers, it would go onto it right there in front of it. Line goes through the center of it, and it ties onto a swivel. And you got this thing. I, I, it's hard to describe for somebody that's listening to the podcast, but it's basically little plastic bristles that radiate out almost like the hands of a clock, uh, all the way around this thing there's probably 15 of them and what this thing does is and they've got a demonstration there in their booth that was pretty amazing drag one of these through your the line gets in between a crack and a rock they, they've got this rock there and it's got a crack in it and the line gets in it this pulls in up to it and this gets stuck they put this little hairbrush toothbrush looking thingy on there it drags up to it with the line in the crack in the rock, and it pulls right through. Basically, these little flexible bristles allow that 
line the the rig not to push in and dig in as much it's rounded on the edge it's pretty cool is what it comes down to i'll put you a link to the website where you can check this stuff out i don't know if it's in production and distribution yet but dragon master i think it's dragonmaster.com again i'll put you the correct link down in the description section it's some innovative stuff is what it is it is something different it is uh, something other than the ordinary. My guess is uh, that they're going to have more of this stuff in the future. So this was pretty cool. Um, they've also got some little rattles, uh, and the rattles are nothing new or you know earth-shattering. These are the same things. We called them worm rattles. Before there were demon dragons, we were putting these little... Um, the little they look almost like the peg in a peg float. And, but they've got little balls in them that rattle back and forth. And... Uh, they're a lot of times made of glass. I've never, the glass ones are really loud and they got a sharp sound. The bad part is they do break. Uh, so you don't want that happening. Uh, but these are made out of plastic and I got like three steel balls in them. That's nothing that's like super new, but it's a good, cheap, affordable way to have some type of rattle, some type of noise, uh, nothing, nothing super overpowering and at a very, very good price point. So, um, those were kind of the highlights uh, from the catfish world anyway of stuff that was unique to this to this sport. There was a lot of kayak stuff there. Any of you folks that are into kayak fishing, there's more and more kayak stuff coming on the market. It's crazy just how many are there. Different brands that are making them. Lithium batteries are the other thing. Uh, I've done some videos on lithium batteries and we'll probably put some on the boat to test them out and see how they work. Uh, a lot of different vendors there that have them. And we're not just talking the major big names. There's a lot of different people coming into that space. The price is getting more affordable. It's not going to come down as cheap as lead acid batteries, but uh, they're getting more and more affordable. More and more of them are having the uh, Bluetooth technology also that makes just the interfacing with what's going on with them a lot easier. So that's another, you know, cool thing that I, I'll, you know, keep you posted on what we'll see. But It'll be interesting to see what happens next year. I do plan to be at I ICAST again next year to uh, see what's developing, what's changing out there, and uh, try to keep you guys up to date on what's happening. And uh, just figure I'd give you an update. Again, the show, sadly, is not open to the public. So keep the, you know, if you're looking for catfish-specific gear, Smoky Mountain Fishing Expo is coming up here uh, in August. That'll be in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And then there's the Catfish Conference, which is always the, I believe, the last weekend in February, which is in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. So that's kind of the granddaddy show. So those are places you can buy stuff. Those are places where all the vendors will be there. The Catch the Fever folks will be there. Monster Rod Holders will be there. All of these vendors who sell stuff will be there to sell it. So a little different deal than ICAST. So, uh, but it's a good barometer of what's going on in the fishing industry and the fishing world. And according to people I've talked to, everything's going strong. People are spending money making stuff and uh, there's no big pullback or rollback. So anyway, that's it for now. Just want to give you a little update on that and uh, some feedback on what I learned and saw down there. And until next time, we'll catch you out on the water.